I actually went back and watched last year's combine reactions. Uh, the big takeaway that we had 365 days ago, Hayden, there were no freakazoids. And that sentiment seemed to last all the way through the NFL draft, despite four wide receivers being selected mm-hmm. in the first round. Uh, this year, 2024, it's very different, right? I mean, even when the top two names were out, took themselves out in Marvin Harrison Jr. and Malik Neighbors. We still got a uh, big, beefy specimens who worked out. Roma Dunze went crazy in the, uh, we just got the short shuttle drill. He's massive as well. Brian Thomas goes absolutely nuclear. And those two aren't the talk of the wide receiver groups. Nope. Because these two Texas wide receivers went nuts. I just want to put some context to just wide receivers in general. Again, we had four wide receivers who went in the first round last year. One that was 5'9", 182. That was a Flowers. One was 5'11", 173. That was Jordan Addison. One that was 6'1", 196 in JSN. And then uh, maybe the forgotten about 6'3", 212, Quentin Johnston. So... Just keep those frames and those sizes in mind as we discuss the rest of this year's wide receiver group where, hey, maybe a dozen of them go in the first round. And that (laughs) kicks off with a historic number that we got with Texas wide receiver Xavier Worthy, a 4-2-1 40-yard dash at 5-11 and one and a quarter and 165 pounds. So this is very complicated. First of all, it was so sick to watch him actually run that super impressive it's going to draft or increase his draft stock so this is for sure a guaranteed win does this mean he's guaranteed to be a great wide receiver or be a top 20 pick i still don't think so just going through the top combine scores at in terms of the 40 yard dash john ross Dre archer marquise goodwin jerome mathis jacoby ford jj nelson darius hayward bay mike thomas not even michael thomas is uh, santana moss Dion butler tequan underwood any of those guys Remember them in fantasy circles? Not necessarily. Now, Xavier Worthy was very productive coming from a big school, and I think that he's more likely to go late round one uh, than round two at this point. He'll probably be right on the fringe, and that's where like the guys attached to Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen can be. Everyone needs speed. He certainly justifies that, but we'll have to go to the tape to just see how good we think he's going to be, and can he stay on the field in two wide receiver sets? Because like you said, he is extremely light. In fact, Nobody this light has gone uh, so high in the NFL draft. Only seven players lighter at the wide receiver position in NFL combine history, 165 pounds. I did just want to bring up mock draftable. Uh, we're fans of the page and just look at some of these weights for wide receivers. I believe this is since 1999, as you can see with the top with Craig yeast. Uh, there's also tank Dell who obviously lit the NFL world on fire in a stretch last year at 165 pounds. There's Marquise Brown at 166. There's Deshaun Jackson at 169. So again, this is the range that we are mm-hmm. talking about with Xavier worthy. I will say Hayden, as much as I'm going to talk about size and weight, I think you just have to flat out respect four two one one speed. Hell yeah, of course. That's, in, that's <laughs> unreal. I will add the guy who had the record before this at John Ross at 422 was 23 pounds heavier. Okay. Yeah. And obviously he ended up being a top 10 selection and in amazing 40 yard dash times make people go crazy. I will add though, on top of that, Xavier Worthy also produced a 41 inch vertical leap. That's the 18th best, mm-hmm. uh, I believe, since the 2008. NFL combine among all wide receivers. The name that sprung to mind for me was Marquise Goodwin. I know you've watched a little bit of Xavier Worthy. We do plan on having individual videos for every single one of these wide receivers and running backs and quarterback prospects on the channel. Just quick thoughts, though, on how Texas utilized Xavier Worthy. It's no surprise here. I thought that he was very functional as a deep threat. I thought there were some lapses in his uh, ball tracking ability. When he ever runs a slant route in breaking routes, I thought that he was a little bit nervous over the middle. And also when he got when defenders got their hands on him, he would get thrown around a little bit. So I don't think he's the most well-rounded wide receiver, but he's young. He was very productive from a power five school with four, two, one speed. And now it's probably going to go in the first round, potentially to a team that has a bunch of fit. So I don't want to be completely out on him. I didn't think that he was the perfect prospect in general based off his tape, just because I thought the size was very limiting and what they can ask him to do. But someone like you just said with tank Dell, I think that's kind of the blueprint moving forward. And Xavier worthy has obviously even crazier speed than tank Dell showed last year. According to PFF's draft guide, just 10 targets on go balls last year, just three receptions uh, for 125 yards and a score. In fact, just deep catches in general, just six all of yeah. last season. Compare that to his screen catches, 26 
uh, and that was 20th, 22nd in all of college football. So it seemed like they wanted to utilize his speed in the screen game yes. more so in the vertical game. But I think that also goes to some of his limitations on yeah. on tape, just because he's so explosive. What do you do with those players? You get the ball in their hands immediately. But he was he earning the targets like other uh, round one wide receivers? Not necessarily. So he's a young player in development. The speed is awesome to see. So I don't want to be too down on him, but right. he's well, not the top 20 wide receiver that we're kind of accustomed to. So final question. We're in March. Does really, truly the record setting 40 yard dash at the NFL combine that has gone on for decades. Yeah. Not laying in the first round. Well, I think he will land in the first round. I moved him up in my grades. Cause I thought I knew who we all knew who was fast. Right. I didn't see this level of speed before. Like I didn't see this on tape to this degree. I thought it was going to be in the four threes, four, two, one is I can't even wrap my hand around it. So why I love this position so much is even guys that were on the same team. Again, 5'11", 165 pounds in Xavier Worthy. And then his teammate, A.D. Mitchell, six foot two, 205 pounds, also goes out there and tears it up, but in a very, very different frame. Again, that is a 40-pound difference between the two. And A.D. Mitchell produces a 4-3-4-40, a 1-5-2, 10-yard split to go along with a 39-and-a-half vertical jump. Uh, Hayden, this is all good stuff. This is 97th percentile adjusted spark athleticism. In my opinion, this is a, the more impressive athletic feat. A.D. Mitchell doing it at his weight just because that's 92nd percentile in the 40. His vertical 85th percentile, his broad jump 98th percentile, his speed score, which kind of weight adjust the 40 yard dash and the 92nd percentile. This dude in a straight line has all the juice that you're talking about when you watch him on tape, when he's running these vertical routes, which he ran a whole lot of them, lots of double moves, post routes, go balls, slot fades, that type of production. He's so smooth. He can kind of play with these wide receivers. And that's why he would score some of these deeper touchdowns. We didn't get the agility drills. When we saw him in the position stuff, he, he did tumble throughout the gauntlet. That was my one concern watching on tape is how well can he get in and out of the breaks moving laterally? But the straight line explosiveness is super sick to see. 97th percentile athleticism. I also think that he was kind of on this round one, round two kind of border. And now if I had to guess, he would be going round one. What's fascinating is his average depth of target, 16 last year, is about five and a half yards further than Xavier Worthy's was, despite, again, their frames and their size. Screens, um, yeah. I, I am early in on A.D. Mitchell, but I loved his fluidity. I loved his body control, especially uh, along the sideline to elevate and then also to attack blind spots of of corners yeah i mean this checks nearly every box in fact to me like i thought that his smoothness someone of that size that is stellar and then rarely do you also get this level of athleticism mm -hmm. on top so i don't see how and i know that we are going to talk about that top clear three but this is also again a true prototype frame that other than if you want to talk about quentin johnson we did not see last yeah. year and this guy has a chance at best to be wide receiver four in this draft mm -hmm. class. That's pretty amazing to me. Yeah, this class is just way better than last year. So I'm yeah. not even close. Like AD Mitchell would to me be right there in the wide receiver one discussion from last year. Yeah, absolutely love that. Okay. Speaking about size, let's talk about Keon Coleman because now that the NFL combine is mainly portrayed to all of you as just a 40 yard dash and that's it, I think we need to unpack what this should be to me and how people should interpret the NFL combine, because for one people view it as, Hey, if you're not one of these top testing athletes, then no bueno. When really, if you test as an average athlete, that's fine. There are the NFL is littered with average athletes. Just don't test in the bottom percentile and don't test as a non NFL caliber athlete. The reason I want to bring this up here with Keon Coleman is six foot three, 213 pounds, goes and runs a four, six, 140. But Hayden, it goes beyond this because also at the NFL combine now, we have miles per hour involved. And these are new metrics that we're also looking at for not just wide receivers, but for prospects at all positions. So before we even get to the next gen stat stuff, I just wanted to mention that Keon Coleman, it was bottom seventh percentile speed. When you weight adjust it, it goes up to the 24th percentile because he's a bigger dude. His jumps were more impressive. His broad jump, 78th percentile because he has burst. If you've watched Keon Coleman 
that would not be a surprise. But when you watch the actual drills of him catching the football, nobody looked more fluid than Keon Coleman. The next gen stats, when they broke it down, he was 15th when it came uh, in terms of miles per hour on the 40 yard dash. But when he was running through the gauntlet, he was the fastest wide receiver on the slant routes, dagger routes, go, go routes, uh, and even the slot routes that they showed uh, throughout the drills. He was among the fastest of the group. So it's really complicated game speed, time speed, all of those things. Keon Coleman, to me, was never a blazer on tape. I think when you and I go and actually dissect his film for our upcoming video on him, to me, the question is going to be, how much bend does he have? Could he get in and out of his breaks? Because... You, I think everyone agrees that his contested catchability is fantastic. I think everyone else agrees that the raw speed isn't up there, but could he still kind of win in DeAndre Hopkins, Michael Thomas, uh, T Higgins type of ways? Potentially, there are also a lot of Nikhil Heary type of wide receivers that kind of have this profile. So just to put some stats to this, uh, he did have 10 contested catches last year that were successful. That was tied for 37th. In all of college football, eight deep catches on top of it. Uh, his average at the target was 12.4 yards. Yards of the catch per reception at 6.3 yards. Again, this is all according to PFF's draft guide out there. Um, I did want to read just a few of big bodied outside wide receivers and their 40 times to put a little context mm -hmm. to this. Because again, at 213 pounds at six foot three and where he lined up at FSU where I believe 379 snaps in total and 119 of those were in the slot. Typically when you see some slot wide receivers, their 40 times might not be good, but then their three cone or short mm -hmm. shuttle are fantastic. Again, you almost want to split the athletic testing and the composite scores that you think of with these guys with slot versus outside. Um, when it comes to Keon Coleman, there were names like Allen Robinson, there were names like Brandon Lloyd. There are also names like Kelvin Benjamin and mm -hmm. Devin Funchess. And so I'm with you. It's He has clear areas where he wins, but it gets to a point where, hey, can you translate those against top NFL competition or have you already kind of maxed out in what you do and what you did at the college level just mm -hmm. is not as successful as it is the NFL level? Yeah, I think your opinion on Keon Coleman, you can see the data either way. You can see 461, yeah, right, never going to happen. Or you can say, well, the broad jump's there. Uh, the drills were were there. He plays faster than that, and we'll see what happens. So, yeah, I can't wait for your, like, film opinion on it because I think that's going to – he's going to be one of, like, the most, like, polarizing draft figures, and he can probably – I'm guessing he's going to go, like, early second-ish round. Maybe he was kind of on the round one range a while ago, but I think AD Mitchell, Keon Coleman were kind of battling, and then – Today, clearly, the winner was A.D. Mitchell. How do you think people should interpret miles per hour now that we have it involved with NFL Combine activities? It's only in the last five years. And as you can see, as Hayden mentioned, he was 15th among 15 wide receivers in his group for 40 time miles per hour. But then third, fourth, second, second in terms of actual on-field drills. I think that Keon Coleman trusts his hands more than the other guys. And I think that's why he was running a little bit faster than this. I don't know how to interpret this data because we don't have anything historical with it, which is right. why we love the, the combine because we have so much data to go off of. But uh, there were definitely times on tape where I saw him bend, hurdle a guy, pick up some first yardage. He's, just, he's not a blazer, but we don't need every single wide receiver to be a blazer either. Like Keep in mind, like Devontae Adams, his kind of profile was somewhat similar-ish to this in terms of size, speed, weight. Cooper Cup, the same thing. Like some of the best wide receivers are running four, five, five to four, six, one. Yeah. The difference is Keon Coleman's an outside wide receiver and Cooper Cup spends two thirds of his yeah, time in the for slot. Sure. For sure. Um, you mentioned something I, I, I wanted to quickly say that the reason why it's drills or tests aren't added to the NFL combine or taken away is because you can compare over decades, right? And so you have a database of decades of thousands and thousands mm -hmm. and thousands of NFL prospects versus just going off miles per hour, which is all that we have in the last five years. The sample size is so much smaller. So the real uh, key of understanding athletic testing is to then also compare it to again, decades and decades of players that have come through the NFL draft. Yep. Should we stick with one more big dude? Let's do it. <laughs> Xavier Leggett out of South Carolina, six foot yes. one, 221 pounds. Again, in this same group, we have Xavier Worthy at 165 pounds 
And then a guy that is 56 pounds heavier in Xavier Leggett, and they are listed in the same positions. It's why I love wide receivers so much. He was the heaviest wide receiver, Hayden. He also, I believe, tied for, in the first grouping, the fastest 40 of that of that group. Yeah, he's he was an absolute monster. The speed score is 96 percentile, which accounts for the weight and his speed out there. And it's a 439, by the way. Yes, vertical 90th percentile, broad jump 72nd percentile. He is not as tall as they once listened. There was like one time where I was like, is he 6'3"? No, he's he's 6'1", which is totally fine. Really kind of throwback profile, kind of like looks like A.J. Brown. The difference is, we'll get to his tape eventually, is he frustrates you. There's a reason <laughs> why he's supposed to go like late second round, despite this type of profile, a late breakout. But there were plays. He was he did it even on special teams. But there were a couple plays out there where you're like, this is the best athlete on the field. And he tested very similar to that. I'll be fascinated to see if he's more than just the athlete or if he's all athlete right now. And then he has to kind of refine his game from there. Just looking at pure raw stats, which some in the football community love to do. In 2021, he had 14 targets and eight receptions for 63 yards. In 2022, he had 29 targets, 18 receptions, and 167 yards. And then we get to last season, 97 targets, 71 receptions, 1,255 yards, and seven scores. So we have seen these giant leaps pay off. We've also seen almost one-year wonders not pay off in the league, but few have we seen just six foot one, 220 pound dudes run sub four fours. Like the list is very, very short. So like a couple of years ago, the round two guys, like we had like Jonathan Mingo, Terrace Marshall, like I would put Xavier Leggett kind of in that type of range. The difference is Leggett could be like the wide receiver 14 off the board because there's so many other good ones. And like Mingo was like, is he the wide receiver six? Cause nobody else was kind of stepping up. Uh, I think that we're kind of boom bust round two type of profiles with these guys. Okay. Let's talk about Ladd McConkey then. Yes, okay. please. Five eleven and a half, and a half, basically 186 pounds lad goes out there and produces a four three nine forty a one five two ten yard split uh hayden he is white so he often gets compared to white wide receivers uh not many white dudes like this also run a four three nine yeah, uh, only a guy I can think of was like Andy Isabella was running this fast. The <laughs> difference is a Andy Isabella did not have the route running chops that Lad McConkey has. Uh, the ten yard split and the forty yard dash are both in the eightieth percentile historically. He's still definitely undersized, one hundred and eighty six pounds. But is that that does not mean that he's just a slot wide receiver? Like he can go play on the perimeter against SEC guys. He's sneaky fast if you watch the tape out there. And I think there's a chance that he goes late round one. I think he's most likely to go early round two, but uh, his production profile is not the same, but we've seen some of these players that go to massive schools with target competition and weird offenses like Georgia that, that, that could run the ball a ton. And I think there's a chance that he's going to uh, out draft what his kind of production profile is. And I think today was kind of a wake up call for people that haven't like really watched Ladd McConkey. He's a legit good athlete, double moves on the perimeter. Obviously he can win in the slot as well. Uh, but yeah, during the broadcast, Daniel Jeremiah threw up, uh, him and Garrett Wilson as comparables in terms of high weight speed. I did the same thing with Chris Olave. I mean, it's not that outrageous to kind of compare him to like these late round one type of wide receivers. And he was injured quite a bit last year. If you combine the last two years, he basically played 500 snaps. Uh, just 122 of those were in the slot. So I'm with you. He can be almost that movement guy who can be out wide in, in two wide receiver sets. Mm -hmm. If you want to move him to the slot because of matchups or separation or getting close to the football, on third downs or whatever and three wide receiver sets, you, you can absolutely do that. I just loved his separation. It was all about creating it, sustaining it, and then trying to, again, sustain it even more after the catch. A lot of fun to watch him as a player. He was one of my favorites watching the gauntlet drill, which is, I, to me, kind of a test. Like, how much do you trust your hands? And Ladd McConkey was smooth, smooth, smooth in that drill. Not a surprise. Should we talk about Roma Dunze now? Because I loved seeing him just participate. You know, and I don't hold against, you know, Marvin Harrison Jr. or Malik Neighbors who didn't even weigh in or measure in at the NFL Combine. But Roma Dunze goes out there a hair under six foot three, 212 pounds. And from my seat, it was only because he he wanted to show that he's an athlete. And guess what? He has four, four, five, one, five, two, 10 yard split, 
39 inch vertical jump and only nine players. Okay. Only nine wide receivers in, that were invited of 39, I believe 40 participated in the three cone and the 20 yard short shuttle. He did both. And he's also locked in as a top three wide receiver in this class. Rome absolutely lit it up in the short shuttle 92nd percentile. And most of the players that have like 92nd percentile short shuttle agility weigh like 190 pounds. He did it at 212. And by the way, the 212, that was shocking to me. As somebody who boarded the plane right next to Roma Dunze on the way to Las Vegas, I can promise you when he steps on the NFL football field, he will be significantly more uh, weight bearing than 212. This is a massive dude with great feet. So I think that he uh, didn't like blow up the combine, but for somebody of, of his size, this was a very good day for Roma Dunze and he will not make it past. I would say the ninth overall pick uh, with the Chicago bears. Yeah. Again, just thinking back to where we were 365 days ago, talking about last year's class, where I believe you even went on a spiel, a monologue talking about how the position has changed and, you know, guys that are 185 pounds or 195 pounds, that's the new normal versus these dudes that are 200, 210. And we should get used to this. Mm -hmm. Welcome to 2024. We don't have to get Thank used you. to it anymore. <laughs> we're back. We get size, we get girth. Um, and what I loved about Odunze was he's a legit X wide receiver. And oh, like yeah. we, we legitimately did not get any of those in last year's class, you know, and this year we get a handful of them and he's certified one of them. Plus this athleticism. Uh, I thought he had separation skills to go along with obviously the jump balls that Michael Penix threw up for him. There's a lot to love here. And in a bunch of other years, including last year, he would have been drafted as the wide receiver one overall. I completely agree. He's, he's a monster. I mentioned Malik Neighbors and Marvin Harrison. Do you want to add any of your thoughts on top of that with those two? Uh, yeah, Neighbors and Marvin Harrison Jr. are very good. Uh, Marvin Harrison is going to – I don't think that either of them are going to do anything at these days, and it's not going to matter. They're probably going to go fourth and fifth. I, I'll just add that Marvin Harrison checks in at six foot three and a quarter, 209 pounds, uh, nine and a half inch hands. Again, Malik Neighbors, along with Jaden Daniels, just elected not to. Uh People can wonder if maybe that's because he's five foot ten or so on and so forth, whatever his weight is, whatever. Who cares? We'll find out at the uh, pro day. I just saw in his interviews, and sure, he's sitting next to NFL reporters, which Hayden loves to point out are notoriously small. Uh, yeah. His hands look massive. His hands look massive holding yeah. all these microphones. <laughs> uh, I did see there was uh, from the athletic. They kind of like summarized their like these players when they're in their training. Uh, apparently Marvin Harrison did 22 reps at 225 on the bench press. He can bench 380 pounds, which is outrageous. His, uh, short shuttle time at 3.9. And then he also can run 23 miles per hour. So this was not, nothing from the combine. This is just like what he does in training. That's freak. That's yeah. freak. No big deal. And Malik neighbors is just an explosive play waiting to happen. He's, he's a special, special player when you get to watch him. And again, I want to remind you. Here on the channel throughout draft season, we're going to have individual videos on all of these prospects. So hit that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button while you are here. Okay, since we mentioned neighbors, should we talk about his running mate at LSU? That is Brian Thomas Jr. Just a shade under six foot three, 209 pounds. While he might be the quote other LSU wide receiver, I was texting you and producer Weaves in the background. I thought he'd be slimmer than this. He wasn't. Brown 210 is magnificent. I never questioned his speed, and he still had it at that weight at a blazing, Hayden, blazing 4-3-3-40 with a 1-5-10 yard split. Both of those were in the 92nd percentile, and he was bigger than a lot of the players that run that fast. 95th percentile speed score. The jumps also cleared the 70th percentile as well. Yeah, he's another one of these guys where he's an ex-wide receiver to me. If you want him to be, he can win over wow. the middle. He also can win down the field. He was a freak. There were some plays after the catch that he made. There were some contested catches. I also saw uh, Jaden Daniels on occasion would underthrow some footballs, and Brian Thomas would absolutely eat them up. So uh, it's pretty – it's just hilarious. We keep mentioning it. He runs 4-3-4 at 210 pounds. And in last year's class, we would have been freaking out. He would have been the thumbnail and the guy we would love this with. And he's like the wide receiver eight in this conversation just because of this class is so damn good. I think that to me, he is like still better than the AD Mitchell types uh, on tape, in my opinion. So I think that he's still like the wide receiver four. And there were some, I think, Bills fans, the Chiefs fans were like, could he come all the way down to me? I don't think so. I think he's going closer to top 15. Uh, 
I think that he and Xavier Worthy and maybe Troy Frank Franklin um, out of Oregon kind of fill similar areas on an NFL roster in terms of roles as downfield playmakers. Uh, maybe we can spin this over into Troy Franklin conversation as well. Uh, again, a shade under six foot two, but he is 33 pounds lighter at 176 pounds. And this is why I love the evaluation process. I've probably watched 50 snaps on both of these dudes. And just from watching the snaps, I actually preferred Troy Franklin's game. Uh, Cause I thought again, on just the 50 that I watched that Brian Thomas, uh, lost some physicality to some physical corners, saw him lose some contested situations. He didn't go up and get it in every single scenario. Uh, but here we get with Troy Franklin, again, 33 pounds lighter. He has a incredibly slow 10-yard split on top of his 4 4 one, 40. Uh, I don't have his 10-yard split written down. Maybe it's not official at this time, but I saw that it was even slower than what I believe Keon Coleman's was yes. at 4 6 one, again, a 4 6 one, 40 yard dash. Yeah, so Troy Franklin, uh, that was 11th percentile 10-yard split. It doesn't make any sense. I so guess. it's like the flying 30, basically, right. the final 30, and that's where he picks Eat, up all eat. of his juice. Yeah, this guy would destroy everybody in the 400, but not the 100 meter. Um, also, only 30th percentile in the short shuttle. So even though he was really light, like this BMI, like just kind of translating weights and heights together is shockingly really low. And just did not have like the crazy speed. Like 441 is still so, so, so fast, but it's not rare fast. And I think that if Xavier Worthy is kind of fighting for the same type of role, uh, AD Mitchell um, potentially on the outside as well, I think that Troy Franklin's one of the biggest losers. And I think even when we got into the, the positional drills, I thought that he was like running extra slow through the gauntlet. He was kind of waving back and forth. I'm not sure if he trusted his hands. And when I watched him on tape, that to me was the thing that was kind of worrisome was just his ability to break on routes over the middle and then also kind of just catch the ball in traffic. And we kind of saw some of those things pop up in the combine. So I think now it's more likely that he goes round two than he goes round one, even though he was very productive young player at Oregon. Yeah. Again, it's not just the 40 and the 10. I do want to bring up Franklin's weight at 176 and just talk about Odunze again at 212 pounds. Because if we look at, let's say there are three cone times, um, Odunze was at 6.88 seconds. Again, what, 40 pounds-ish mm -hmm. heavier, 35 pounds. Troy Franklin was at 6.9 seconds. If we look at their shuttle times, Odunze was at 4.03 seconds. And Troy Franklin was down there at 4.31 seconds. So it's not exactly lining up in the short, close distances right now with Troy Frank Franklin. And it's more about the final 30 deep speed. And if he is sectioned to that part of his game, then that is more of a luxury, a role right. player versus what maybe some of these other guys can be in their full route tree. Or he's just, and you're saying he's below average in many of those categories. That's fine. It's not like, non NFL caliber athlete stuff, which is really what we're trying to avoid. He's 36 percentile in adjusted spark per all go. my metrics. So yeah. it's not worrisome, but it, it is worrisome to me because I thought that like what made him good was his athleticism and the fact that he well, didn't and, have and this it. class is just so competitive, right? So yeah. like he can be the wide receiver eight now. And there was talks where he could be the wide receiver four or five. Well, I, I know that they might not play the exact same spot in the same role, but should we talk about Ricky Purcell? Uh, yes out of florida six foot one 189 pounds he actually has the 10th highest vertical jump of any wide receiver uh, at the nfl combine since i believe 2009 at 42 inches that goes along with 441 40 a 157 10 yard split uh hayden and he's i believe another white dude he is 97 percentile on the vert 90th percentile short shuttle 96 percentile three cone and what made me kind of perk up on this one is this is not somebody that got a lot of buzz. He went down there in the senior bowl and performed well. When I watched him on tape, I thought he was the smoothest coming in and out of his breaks of all of the wide receivers that I watched. Um, and then Daniel Jeremiah kind of sneaks him into this top 50. And then today he absolutely goes nuts. So this is probably somebody, if you're looking at production scores, I think a, a late breakout, uh, not going to get the height that other players get at this position. I think that this is another winner in this class. I think this is somebody that's going to go earlier in the draft than most people expect. And I think that people will appreciate Ricky Purcell's tape more. And 
hand up. I did not think that the explosive ability that he showed at the combine was on film. So I'm excited to go back on a rewatch and make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, if you have a favorite under the radar wide receiver that maybe Purcell was prior to this, leave it in the comments down below. I'll throw out one more name since mm -hmm. the discussion of big dudes as wide receivers shifting over to tight end has happened previously. Darren Waller's a name here. Uh, Johnny Wilson certainly didn't test like a wide receiver to Not tight end convert. Uh, six foot six and three eighths inches. 231 pounds, massive 10 inch hands. And then Hayden, again, keeping in mind that he's 231 pounds. He runs a four, five, two, a one, five, five, 10 yard split. We just talked about Troy Franklin, uh, at his four, three, one, 20 yard short shuttle. Johnny Wilson goes out there at a hundred pounds heavier, basically, <laughs> and runs a four, one, one. You can talk about stride length. You can talk about it all, but I mean, Hayden, I believe this is also a guy that in some ways was more productive than Keon Coleman at FSU. Uh, About. Also ran faster than Keon Coleman did today. Um, it's an interesting development here after this conversation, this narrative had kind of started to trickle out. He was a monster. I mean, that short shuttle time is amazing. 82nd percentile, his broad jump, 81st percentile, his speed score, which is the weight adjusted 40, also 82nd percentile. I believe like the longest wingspan of a wide receiver as well in NFL history. So we're talking about kind of this hybrid potential player. I haven't watched him yet just because he was so far kind of buried in these consensus rankings. I was kind of waiting to see if he's going to be a tight end or wide receiver. I think he'll probably be a wide receiver at this point. He's way too athletic to be kind of just thrown into the tight end uh, wasteland. So, uh, yeah, I need to go back out there and watch it. But he, he and Coleman had very similar uh, stats in that Florida State offense. And just there's a lot of guys at Florida State, by the way. Like they have a, a tight end. Trey Benson, we'll get to him and the running back version guys. of this. Defensive guys, the the quarterback ran around a little bit as well. So maybe that's one of the reasons why Keon Coleman and Johnny Wilson are popping the production profiles because there was like four other guys who hit the ball too. Is there anyone else that you wanted to mention before we get out of here on this video? Um, Jermaine Burton and Tez Walker, both uh, about 195 pounds. They checked the boxes in terms of speed and broad jump. Uh, I really liked what they did. And then let's see. I know you're a Roman Wilson guy a little bit too at nearly 5'11", 185 pounds. Uh, also, I believe put out there a 4'39 and a 1'52", 10-yard split. Yeah, he he was really quick. Not a surprise there. Um, kind of a slot wide receiver. You kind of dream that he can be a Monroe St. Brown in some ways. That, that's at least kind of how they used him. Uh, just wanted to note Malachi Corley. He has like a lot of buzz. He's like the classic. This is the next Debo Samuel. He oh. chose not to run today or measure he was a senior bowl guy so he measured there like at 5 11 215 and then just didn't do anything at the combine there's no mentions of him uh like being injured or anything like that so i think yeah. i think that he just opted out of doing things which is pretty surprising for somebody that's like not a power five guy um so kind of bold apparently everyone loves this dude when i watched him he kind of seemed like a schemed up guy and comparing people to debo samuel I don't know. That's always rich to me. As, and I think if you were testing like Debo Samuel, I feel like you'd want to show it. So a little bit nerve wracking for Malachi Corley, but we have the pro days to go to. Yeah, I, I went and watched him actually, and it was just yards after the catch set up plays over and over and over again, yeah. either over the middle and turn and run or obviously out in the boundary. Another one that I thought could do those similar things was Malik Washington with Virginia. Only, I think, three players measured in under five foot nine. Um, again, thank you, 2024, mm -hmm. for being here and creating this environment of wide receivers for us. It's like it goes through phases, mm -hmm. Aiden. Um, he's out of Virginia. Again, 5'8 and a half, 191 pounds. Uh, he was a fun watch. So, again, I think teams of those types are going to have to uh, obviously tier them and, mm -hmm. and rank them and see if they can incorporate them too. But yeah, Malik Washington, don't want to overlook this. 99th percentile vertical, 42 and a half inches. I mean, he, he is... He's about this big, but you could not put another muscle on him. He was absolute freak. So very interesting profile just because a lot of it was just peppered underneath stuff. And I didn't think that he had like the long speed of other, other guys that kind of break out of this mold. He's a late breakout himself. Um, but I mean, that short area burst is, is ridiculous. So what a dozen wide receivers in round one this year. 
So I, I went through it, and, and my official <laughs> grades now, I got I got six of them in the first round, and I got about eleven more that it can go in like the before like the early third round. So yeah, this is okay. this group is ridiculous. Absolutely love that. All right, hopefully. We'll have another one of these videos for running backs. Do we want to talk about tight ends here at all? Or do we want to, there's really, to me, not much to say about this group, Hayden, other mm -hmm. than with Brock Bowers not doing anything and just measuring in at six foot three, 243 pounds. I've seen some interesting comparisons of him where he's not your typical Darnell Washington inline tight end coming out of Georgia. In fact, Dallas Clark is an example. Yeah. Jordan Reed is an example if you remember his Washington days um, as a movement piece and think of him more as a pass catcher yeah. than tight end. Anything you want to say about him real quick? Yeah, they just use him out in the flat. They got him the ball. He led Georgia in receiving like for the last couple of years. He can make plays contested kind of like on seam balls. He is a little undersized. I think that's one of the reasons why he didn't run because he tried to bulk up here. Uh, he's not going to be the overpowering guy, but I, when I was watching like Kendall Hilton, for example, the Georgia running back, uh, he can definitely block for somebody that's like his size. And he's got like, he's got such a freaky build to me um, where I think that he's going to grow into his body a little bit more. But yeah, this tight end class is not very good. Um, you have one, one last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had a good one last last year. J Jatavion Sanders, kind of the similar uh, size profile as Brock Powers, didn't uh, really do too much. Fifty uh, eighth percentile in the forty yard dash. He's kind of the consensus number two. The guy that like blew up the combine yeah. is Penn State it's a shocker Theo Johnson, ninety fourth percentile in adjusted spark athleticism. His forty was in the eighty eighth percentile. He did at two hundred fifty nine pounds uh, and ninety eighth percentile height. Uh, his vertical 97th percentile, his broad jump 90th percentile, uh, and then speed score 93rd percentile. So Theo Johnson, kind of a receiving type, but also like could pack it on. This is like classic Penn State stuff. Yeah, I, I went back and watched about 50 snaps of him too, just to get a feel for it. Because I, I actually think other than pass rushers, tight end is the position where you need athleticism in order to be one of the elites, and that doesn't mean drafted in round one. It can be the middle rounds like George Kittle, for example. I'll bring up a tweet in the in a minute that, that kind of outlines this. Um, Theo Johnson just looked like he didn't know how to utilize his athleticism yet. Like He didn't look coordinated as a, a pass catcher. Sometimes he'd be in line. Sometimes they would split him out at wide receiver. Mostly worked over the middle of the field, but maybe if he can like slow the game down a little bit. This is someone like George Kittle at, at Iowa. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't get a ton of opportunities with it. But man, I mean, he he is again one of these late round athletic tight end types that um, I think teams should go out there and target. And then another one is Tip Ryman out of Illinois, six foot five, two hundred and seventy one pounds. And it was very different to me. And it's just a sled, but it's all what these teams are watching too. These two guys were able to get low and drive it about fifteen yards, and the other ones could barely get it three yards uh, and just well, shot straight up in the air. Uh, we're talking about Jatavian Sanders for the last one. Did not the sled got the the best of them, which is not great for his like round two draft capital. Yeah, uh, Tipman is the second highest in adjusted spark according to my stuff at eighty fifth percentile. The weight he's a big, big, big dude out there and still pretty athletic. This is just, and I know that um, relative athletic score Raz is not a perfect composite score. Uh, I for one believe that, and Pro Bowl appearances is not a perfect depiction of talent. But this to me is a pretty good point directionally that shows, Hey, if you are an athletic tight end, or if you need to be one of the elites, you need to have some athleticism for you to you, because look at the number of green tight ends here in terms of athleticism, then it shrinks down to yellow and then barely any are red and even Jordan reads in there. And so, I mean, we know that he was much more athletic and that doesn't even yeah. include the likes of Darren Waller, Antonio Gates, so on and so forth. And this is dating, I believe all the way back to 1988. Uh, so if you made the pro bowl uh, and it has your athleticism on top of it, not bad. Pretty. Yeah. It's, it makes sense. You have to do a bunch of things. You have to be strong. You have to be tall. And then you also have to be able to, to run. So yeah, of course you need a well-rounded profile. And I think like thousand yard pass catchers at the position too is directionally along the same point yeah. at the same time. Okay. Um, was this the video we're gonna do the quarterbacks or do we have another video for that? Um, I, have some, I have some notes if you want to okay, go quick. Go ahead. It's a 40 minute video. <laughs> that's that's fine. People, there's no rush. There's nothing going on in the off season yet. Um, 
Jaden Daniels didn't want to measure up. I think that was kind of interesting for somebody that is going to be smaller um, and did not want to do that. So I think that's a little bit on my radar here. Um, JJ McCarthy in the drills, he still had a little, couple little accuracy things. I think he is tied to his arm. The difference though, is he now is 219 pounds, which is much heavier than people uh, thought. So he's a young player needs to put on some weight and he at least addressed that issue. And then yeah, Penix, Bo Nix, nothing really stood out to me there. I uh, just wanted to give a quick shout out. Joe Milton threw the ball about 70 yards in the air, 75 yards in the air. Uh, does it matter? Not really, but it was really fun to watch. Uh, somebody as big as he is throwing the ball that far is just, that'll never get old. Uh, we'll have maybe next week, like a top 10 rumors coming out of the NFL Combine. J.G. McCarthy's name is definitely a hot topic that was mentioned as a not just a top 10 pick, but potentially a top five draft pick. Um, I know we have friends like Nate Tice, Derek Klassen that have come out and pointed out that throwing to his left, especially like the 10 to downfield yard mark, he has been struggling. I think that showed up in his on-field work as well. Uh, I am not like too into the on-field quarterback stuff. It was very cool last year to see CJ Stroud, and Anthony Richardson throw back to back because you got to see how much mm -hmm. different they looked versus anyone else. I don't think we saw any of that this year. And no. so throwing to different wide receivers that they don't practice with, the timing, the rhythm, as we saw guys running different miles per hour, um, I'm not going to put anything into these on-field throwing portions. Yep. I agree. Okay. I agree. Now we get out of here. Um, again, we'll do a running back video version of this and be sure to hit that subscribe button. Check out the rest of the content on the channel for Hayden, for Weaves. I'm Josh up the villa. We will talk to y'all soon. See ya.